So, I'm here to share my experience with total intravenous anesthesia. And before going for that, okay, let's have a, a small survey uh, from the, uh, I think residents are the uh, most of the audience. I'd like to ask them, what, what mode of, uh, how many of you are using uh, total intravenous anesthesia in your daily practice? Okay, great. Uh, what modalities do you use? It's a manual control, or it's a TCI pumps, or it's a closed loop system. So how many of you are doing manually? Manual control infusions. I think most must be doing this, but uh, not agreeing at this point. <laughs> okay, last question. Uh, do you uh, routinely use any monitoring gadgets while doing TIVA? Okay, we'll jump on. We'll come on to this slide later on. Uh, about TIVA, sir has already uh, broadly explained. It's the, it, it's the uh, one modality of general anesthesia where we are using a combination of drug which are uh, through infusion pump exclusively given intravenously. We are avoiding inhalational agents. This also, sir, has described very well. In the IV induction was popularized only after the introduction of barbiturates in 1930. And then with the introduction of propofol in clinical practice after 1970s, we started to maintain anesthesia, uh, IV anesthesia uh, with IV, in, uh, induc IV agents like propofol was used for induction of uh, inhalation, uh, uh, general anesthesia. Nowadays, TY is becoming more popular, practical, and easier. I think there are two main reasons for uh, this. The first being the advanced knowledge in the pharmacokinetics, as I has explained, pharmacodynamics of the agents like propofol, ketamine, dexmedrumidine, and the recent uh, an addition of the uh, short technique opiates to our uh, OR room, like uh, alfentanil, sufentanil, ramifentanil is yet to come in India. I think it will be available within a couple of months from now. And the second reason is the uh, new concept of pharmacokinetic uh, coupled with, uh, modeling coupled with this uh, syringe infusion pumps which uses algorithm for delivery of the drugs. As sir has broadly explained us the indications of TIVA, I think there is only one contraindication to TIVA that is uh, allergy to that drug or the mitochondrial disease. Rest TIVA can be used in all situations from all uh, population, from pediatric population, the geriatric one, in OR, out of OR, and if we can use TIVA. So I'm here to put my experience in front of you. So what I think, what are the general indications for TIVA? There could be three reasons only. First is, it must be your choice. Second, benefits. Third, you are not left with any other option, like in cases of uh, patients who are susceptible to malignant hyperthermia or the, pati or the patients who have strong family history of malignant hyperthermia. Uh, in these cases, we are left with only intravenous induction as well as maintenance. The second reason is benefits. That has explained very nicely uh, the benefits of uh, intravenous induction and maintenance over uh, inhalation. I'll briefly uh, uh, repeat them less chances of post-operative nausea when meeting when we use propofol as our maintenance agent, clear-headed recovery post-operatively. We can use our neuromuscular, uh, sorry, neurophysiological monitoring, as in cases of spinal uh, instrumentations. Uh, in, uh, IV drug doesn't interfere with neuromuscular, uh, neurophysiological monitoring, and less OR po uh, pollution. And uh, finally, uh, for, uh, for the cases where we don't have any other options, we have necessity to use intravenous anesthesia. So what I say, make it a choice so that you can use in those conditions where TY is the only indication. This is the bolus elimination and transfer scheme which was given long back in 1968, I think, Cruiser and Thamer. They gave this uh, theoretical scheme to uh, explain how a bolus is given in the intravenous compartment, the central compartment, and then a continuous infusion to match the elimination of the drug out of the body via metabolism. And then a declining continuous infusion to match the redistribution of the drug into the various compartment, peripheral compartment to the affect site and the drug which is being eliminated. 
the concept of bal and anesthesia is what we are using a combination of drugs right we, uh, what what is the uh, uh, thought behind that while using combination of drug their anesthetic effects will be synergies whereas their side effects will not so with this concept there are many uh, this uh, uh, concept of synergies has been uh, established with many iv induction iv induction as well as iv agents like uh, most popularly used uh, combinations worldwide in tiva are keto dex keto fol then we have uh, ketamine profol dexmedrimidine we have profol uh, fentanyl we have profol dexmedrimidine fentanyl we have midazolam dex fenta we have ke ketamine uh, midazolam these are the uh, various combination which are used worldwide for the total intravenous anesthesia and their synergies has been well established what we use at our institution is profofol dexmedrimidine fentanyl combination what we do as the patient arrives in the operation theater in operation room we will uh, attach all the monitors asa monitors along with base monitor we use routinely base in our all patients we'll attach the base monitor will check the uh, accuracy of base by emg and a signal quality index one we are satisfied with that we'll start a loading dose of dexmedrimidine with 1 mics per kg over 10 minutes and then we'll start a fixed dose infusion of dexmedrimidine at 0.5 mics per kg per hour meanwhile uh, while the loading dose is given we'll give a pre medication we'll give pre medication with uh, lignocaine 1.5 mic mg per kg we'll add 1 mg of midazolam to it and a fentanyl of 2 mics per kg over at 30 seconds after the uh, this one uh, loading dose of dex has been completed will induce this patient with propofol loading dose of 1 mg per kg targeting the base of 40 to 60 somewhere 50 will keep it as we will achieve the tar uh, this one base of 50 will uh, start infusion of dex uh, this one propofol through manual infusion pump at a rate of 10 mg per kg per hour and will check the clinical response to uh, jothas whether uh, is there any hemodynamic changes of uh, limb movement the loss of hemodynamic re response or limb movement to jothas once we are satisfied there is no limb movement the base is of 50 then we'll give muscle relaxant depending upon the surgery and will either intubate the patient or will go with igel most of the time we use supraglottic airway devices for our uh, all laparoscopic surgeries and here also while going for laryngoscopy and intubation we'll check for the clinical response so we depend on two uh, things so one is the clinical response to the uh, noxious stimuli like jothas and second is the bis we'll take together in combination so now it's uh, whether we'll go for a knob or dial a syringe and a plunger what we are doing is we are regularly conducting our uh, 80% of cases in uh, syringe and plunger using tiva sir has taken uh, uh, sir has already described the factors which are responsible for less compliance to tiva i will just add two more things sir one is there is less of uh, formal trainings to the uh, uh, clinicians about techniques and equipments of the tiva in our institute we don't have this there is only one ot where we are regularly practicing tiva where is others we are doing it in relation like we can see in our picture also these are finally are there one is uh, is the Um, uh, GR, which is working in the OT, where we are regularly using inhalation induction and inhalation maintenance, and she is happy because she has been taught with these techniques in last two years. Where the other uh, guy who is in the Tiva OT, for him everything is new. He is not used to that, so he is busy calculating the doses, busy setting the infusion pumps, uh, uh, checking for the connections, checking for the extension lines, and all those things. So other than those limited data, unavailable bit of the equipment. Uh, unawareness of the techniques of tiva there is less or uh, i may say in our side there is no training of these tiva techniques and equipments so the question is again why we need some monitoring gadgets when we can do it by clinical assessment uh, there was a report uh, fifth national audit project report which came up with that with the use of tiva there were increased chances of accidental awareness under general anesthesia and they uh, uh, they uh, reported these cases more in the patients where muscle relaxants was used so the logic behind that may be that the uh, hypnotic or the anesthetic uh, 
sensitivity of the brain differs from the rest of the may differ from the rest of the organs. Like Sir said, uh, there may be uh, hypotension despite in sub anesthetic doses or sub hypnotic doses of the uh, agent. So in that case, we need both. We need a clinical uh, a technique as well as a, some uh, gadget to monitor the. Um, depth of anesthesia. So what we routinely do is we we'll routinely assess after induction of anesthesia when we achieve a base of 50, we'll check for the uh, response to the jaw thrust. We'll check for the loss of uh, hemodynamic changes or loss of limb movement to jaw thrust and then we'll go for a muscle relaxation. And after even uh, during induction, intubation also we'll check for the hemodynamic response like tachycardia or even bradycardia. If, if there is response to the uh, laryngoscopic intubation, we'll give a bolus dose of fentanyl, one mics per kg, and then we'll uh, proceed uh, maintenance of propofol targeting a piece of 40 to 60. So these are the latest gadgets which are available, uh, which can be used for monitoring depth of anesthesia along with clinical evaluation. The, this, this is the thing which we are using regularly, but one need to know the principles, the limitations, and the interpretation of the BIS while uh, using this gadget because it's a tricky again. There were the practical guidelines given by Nemo and colleagues in 2019 which were published to, uh, to safe practice of the uh, TIVA. I'm not going in details of that, but those guidelines again recommend the use of TCI pumps and closed loop system if you have one with you. They recommend for the uh, single concentration of profile in your department to uh, decrease the confusion about the uh, uh, drug. Like what we store at our department is 1% of propofol. We have uh, just 1% of propofol in our department. Future is TY. It's not a new technique. It will be a uh, uh, mode of anesthesia in future with all advanced uh, TCI pumps, closed loop systems, and with artificial intelligence and metaverse. So, what is your opinion? I think. Uh, now picture will be clear and uh, this picture will become more and more clear after this workshop. So my take home message will be total intervention anesthesia is a valid and a safe alternative to uh, inhalation anesthetics. Use TCI and uh, advanced monitoring system whenever available with you to um, uh, give TIVA and Manual in control infusion can be given using syringe infusion pumps with pre-calculated doses. So step in your comfort zone in TIVA, implement standard safe TIVA practices, and practice, practice TIVA. Thank you.